lahat ay humuko at manalangin. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this wonderful day that you have made possible for all of us to learn and hear from you. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you, we appreciate you, and we allow you to do your work of grace in our lives. Make us the kind of people, the kind of Christian, the kind of believer that Jesus wanted us to be. Bless your servant God with enablement so that he can speak your word with power. Bless your people, Lord God, that they may hear you today and bless your word with revelation. We're expectant of great things that you're about to do in our midst. Lord, we just bind the spirit of hostility. We bind every spirit of destruction. And I just pray, God, that you pour out the spirit of devotion in our midst. Bless us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Palakpan po natin ang Panginoon. Come on. All right. I would like to start off with a short story. Sino po makarinig na malit na kwento? Mabilis lang po ito. Uh, there was this rich man na he wanted to give his mother a birthday gift. But of course, because he is rich, he wanted to give the kind of gift that will outshine every other gift. So he did a survey and uh, he came across a bird, a particular bird that is very expensive. So this bird had the vocabulary of 4,000 uh, words. Nakakapagsabi po siya ng 4,000 words. Feeling ko itong bird na to babae. <laughs> And he can speak three different languages. English, Frances, Kapangpangan. <laughs> And the bird can sing three operatic Arias, parang siguro na kaya niyang kantahin yung ano ba yung mga operatic song? Frozen siguro, ganun. <laughs> so, natuwa po yung mayamang lalaki and he bought the bird at a costly price. According to the story, the bird cost $50,000. dollars na Of course, you always want the best to your mom. So, pinadala niya po yung ibon. He had it delivered to his mother the next day. He phoned his mother. Tinawagan niya po yung nanay niya uh, to see if she received the bird. So, he asked, Mom, what do you think of the bird? And the mother replied, It was delicious. <laughs> Niluto niya. <laughs> Mga nanay talaga eh, no? Lahat niluluto. Okay. And alam niyo po, sometimes there are things in life that because they miss their purpose, they end up miserable. Tragic po, no? Right? So, pwede na po tayong maupo. This morning, allow me to share with you on the subject, the purpose of my life. Love God, make disciples, impact my world. Okay? So, ang lahat po na may purpose, ang boy nila magsabi ng Amen. Tanong, ano purpose ng buhay mo? Amen. Kayo ng amen. Eh, tapos, so, napaka-importante po na we get to understand, we get to discover what purpose we have sa buhay natin. Ang sabi po ni Thomas Carlyle, a man without a purpose is like a ship without a rudder. Ang tao daw po na walang pakay, walang adhikain, walang plano, ay para siyang barko na walang timon. A wave, a nothing, and no man. Have a purpose in life and having it throw such strength of mind and muscles into your work as God has given you. Kapag daw po alam natin yung purpose natin, pwede natin ibuhos yung lakas natin at talino natin dun sa mga trabahong binibigay ng Diyos sa atin. Yun po yung nagagawa ng purpose. It gives direction sa ating mga buhay. There was this man, actually he's an evangelist by the name Billy Sunday, who lived in the 19th century. Sabi niya po, most men fail through lack of purpose than lack of talent. Maraming tao daw po nagiging bigo sa buhay, hindi dahil sa wala silang abilidad, kundi dahil sa wala silang adhikain. Marami naman talagang tao ang matalino, ang dami lang kayang gawin. Sige nga po, sumipol tayo na parang ibon. Diba? O tumahol tayo na parang aso. Sabi ko, tahol, hindi ngisi. Okay. Tawal tayo na parang aso. O iyak tayo na parang baboy. <laughs> Ang gagaling nyo po, no? Pero sa totoo lang, hindi naman yun ang natin. That's not our purpose. If you begin to sound like a pig 
or walk like a dog, di ba? Uh, you miss your purpose in life. Napaka-importante po na matumbok natin yung buhay natin. Kasi uh, there are people that after having graduated from uh, school, secured a very good job, married a wonderful woman, have wonderful children, they finally have their, their house and lot with cars and everything. But at the end of the day, they are not satisfied. You know why? Because they don't know the purpose of their life. Nandiyan pa po ba kayo? Sabi mo sa tabi mo, purpose ba ka mo? <laughs> okay, purpose ba ka mo? Oh, how about this? Let us try this one. Kung maghanap kayo ng purpose sa boy, subukan niyo po ito. Sabi po ng isang quotation, if you can be a pencil to write someone's happiness, then try to be a nice eraser to remove their sadness. Aww. Sa Tagalog po, kung daw hindi natin kaya maging lapis at itsulat ang kaligayahan ng iba, pilitin natin maging pambura at burayin natin ang kanilang kalungkutan. Oo, oh, di ba? Pag nagawa nyo yan, alam nyo po anong tawag sa inyo? Pag nagawa nyo yan, ang tawag sa inyo ay eraser heads. <laughs> anyway, let's read. I want us to understand that if there is one man who lived out his purpose in life, it is Jesus. Nang ipanganak po si Jesus, nung magkaisip siya, until he died, he knew, alam niya, na yung kanyang buhay ay may pakay, may adhikain. Marami po sa atin, we don't find satisfaction in life simply because we don't know our purpose. Kaya nga today, I want you to discover kung ano yung purpose mo sa buhay. I mean, tayo po bilang isang simbahan, this is our advocacy, this is our DNA, this is our culture. We want everybody in this church to know that we love God, we make disciples, we impact our world. Napakadali po ng mission statement natin. Three simple lines, very short to memorize, but this morning, I want to make it even shorter. Okay? I want to give you three words for every praise. Okay, let's start. John 18, verses 1 to 3. After saying these things, Jesus crossed the Kidron Valley with his disciples and entered a grove of olive trees. Judas the betrayer knew this place because Jesus had often gone there with his disciples. The leading priests and Pharisees had given Judas a contingent of Roman soldiers and temple guards to accompany him. Now with blazing torches, lanterns, and weapons, they arrived at the olive grove. I want you to understand, yung pong salitang Kidron Valley, right? na kung saan may mga olive groves, yan po ang report ni John. Nung i-translate po yan sa gospel naman ni Mark, Binigyan niya po ng specific name, yung Kidron Valley na kung saan may mga uh, olive groves. Okay? Uh, basahin po natin, Mark 14 verses 32 to 36. They went to the olive grove called, anong tawag? Gethsemane. And Jesus said, sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him and he became Deeply troubled and distressed. I was surprised. Na di distress din pala si Jesus. Na to trouble din pala siya. Ibig sabihin, na di discourage din pala siya. Alam niyo po kung sino may kasalanan bakit na di distress si Jesus? Tingnan niyo yung katabi niyo. <laughs> Di mo ba? Madalas we are the reason why. Sabi niya po doon, He then told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Imagine niyo ho yung kaibigan niyo o yung leader niyo. Bigla siya mag-open sa inyo at sasabihin niya, Sobrang lungkot ko. Ang bigat-bigat ng pakiramdam ko. Para na akong mamamatay. Ano pong pakiramdam niyo? Ano ang magiging reaksyon niyo? Baka sabi niyo, hey Jesus, huwag ka magsususide, ha? <laughs> right? But, as sabi ni Jesus sa kanila, my soul is crushed with grip to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further and fell to the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him. He cried out, Ava, Father. 
Please take this cup of suffering away from me, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Alam niyo po, uh, madalas yung purpose ng buhay natin, it is being confronted with the purpose of God in our life. Pagkaiba po yun. No? Minsan di po ba may plano tayo, may sariling plano tayo para sa mga buhay natin. Pero may plano si Lord para sa atin. Naniniwala po ba kayo doon? Okay. Alam niyo po, may nabasa ako one time sabing ganon, hindi lahat ng guwapo nag-aartista. Kaya ako hindi na ako nag-artista. Yung iba daw, nagpapastor. Eh, nagpastor na lang ako. Duh. <laughs> anyway, sometimes we have our own dreams. We do everything to achieve our dreams. We want to become successful lawyer. We want to become successful businessman. We want to become successful wife. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good. That's noble. But there is greater purpose than that. And that we need to discover. Ano yung greater purpose na yon? Kapag po yung adikain natin sa buhay ay bumangga, kumontra, lumaban, dun sa plano ng Diyos sa buhay natin, Alin po ang pipiliin natin? Yung pangarap natin, yung hadikain natin, o yung plano ng Diyos para sa buhay natin? Oops, wag muna kayo sasagot. Mag-isip-isip muna. Di ba? Kasi pag magkakasama tayo, madali naman sabihin, yung plano ni Lord. We. Di ba? Madali naman sabihin, siyempre, unahin ko si Lord. But in reality, that's not what happening. Hindi yun ang nangyayari, hindi yun ang pinipili natin. Aja pa po ba kayo? When we say, I love God, that is actually a place of sacrifice. Jesus knew how it is to have a personal Gethsemane. Yung kanyang Gethsemane, yun yung lugar na kung saan binubuksan niya yung kanyang puso. Yung Gethsemane, yun ang lugar na kung saan nagiging bukas siya sa Diyos, sinasabi niya yung nararamdaman niya na sobra siyang distress, sobra siyang troubled, na parang mamamatay na siya. And yet, that place is very, very private and personal. Ang nakakaalam lang noon, the Bible tells us, His disciples and Judas. Are you there? If I may ask you today, Do you have a Gethsemane in your life? Do you have a place of sacrifice in your life? Yung mga kwento, lugar at panahon sa buhay natin na sobrang matindi ang pinagdadaanan mo pero hindi ka nagbukas sa tao, sa Diyos ka nagsumbong. Do you have those moments in your life? O meron lang tayo kasi para tayo mga party animal eh. No? Yung kung saan may party, nandun ka. Kung saan may kainan, nandun ka. Kung saan may picturean, nakapapicture ka. Kasi gusto mo palagi kang masaya. But we have, to under, we have to understand po, when we say, I love God, it's not just a statement. There is a story behind that, I love God. Si Jesus, so, if you notice, sa buong Bible, He never mentioned, I love God. Or I loved God. My Father. But we always see that Jesus is doing His Father's will. That He is always submitting reverently to the will of His Father. And I call that loving God. Alat po na nagmamal sa Diyos magsabi ng Amen. Embracing God's greater purpose for our life is the greater indication of our love for God. Kapag daw po niyayakap natin yung plano ng Diyos sa buhay natin, yun ang maliwanag na palatandaan na mahal natin ang Diyos. Tanungin ko po kayo. Kapag may schedule kayo ng life group, tapos biglang nag-text yung best friend mo, labas daw kayo. Nagbanggaan yung schedule ng life group, tsaka nung lakad nyo ng barkada mo, anong pipiliin mo? <laughs> Sabi nung isa, nan urog. <laughs> Yung sagot na labas sa ilong. No. Oh, let's make it a little bit more harder. Okay. Alam mo naman, every Sunday may worship. Eh nagkataon, syempre, mga balikbayan, lalabas ng Sunday. Anong pipiliin mo? Sumama sa mga balikbayan o manambahan? Ha? Huh? Balikbayan. Sabi na nga ba yung live group niya kanina labas sa ilong? 
Dahil may balikbayan na. Balikbayan ang pinili. Ako man ito eh. Lalo na kung may balikbayan box. Yeah? I mean, let's make it even more complicated. What if God's will for you runs again against dun sa existing na buhay mo? Sinasabi ng Lord, Anak, I'm not pleased with the kind of relationship that you have. Talikuran mo na yan at sumunod ka sa akin. Anong pipiliin mo? Susunod ka sa Lord? O mas pipiliin mo yung sitwasyon mo sa ngayon? Let's make it even more harder. What if sabihin ng Lord sa'yo, anak, it's about time to be serious with your relationship with me. Be honest with your business dealings. Dahil nag na yung Christian conviction mo tsaka yung pamamalakad mo ng business, anong pipiliin mo? Business, si Lord. Wala na akong kausap. Mga true to life na itong tinatanong ko. That's why when we say, I love God, that statement should go beyond our actual life. Na hindi lang mo natin basta sinasabi yung purpose ng buhay natin, kundi may kwento yun, may bigat yun. Na kapag sinabi mong mahal mo si Lord, meron kang ipinalit doon. Meron kang isinuko sa pagmamahal na yun. Andiyan pa po ba kayo? Kapag gusto natin, yung gusto natin ay nagbanggaan doon sa gusto ng Diyos para sa atin, yung pagtalikot sa sarili nating kagustuhan at pagyakap doon sa kagustuhan natin, ng Diyos para sa atin, yun ang pinakamalinaw na indikasyon na mahal mo talaga ang Diyos. Andiyan pa po ba kayo? Andiyan pa po ba kayo? Earlier, binanggit po ng mga tumayo dito that we still have four months for the year to be over. The year of greater things. At sa four months, ang dami pa mga promises ang pwedeng to pa rin ni Lord. Sino po may mga promises sa buhay dito? You have a personal promise from God. And you are waiting for God to answer them. Right? Kahit po ako, may personal promises ako from the Lord. But my question today is, undoubtedly, there's no problem about the promise. All the more, there's no problem about the promise giver. Bakit nadidelay yung mga promise? Okay? Let's try another perspective. Ito muna yung consider natin. What is the greatest commandment in the Bible? What's the greatest commandment in the Bible? Anybody? Come on. Handa, bikas. Okay. Love God. Right? Ang una at pinakadakilang batas ng Biblia, mahalin ang Diyos. Adyan pa po ba kayo? That's why when you have these promises from God, when you have this prophetic word from God, that saying God will do greater things in your life, that there will be answered prayer, that there will be miracles, that there will be deliverance and provision, and yet they are not happening. Probably you have to ask yourself, am I doing the greatest commandment? Nandiyan pa po ba kayo? Kasi kung makapag-incast tayo ng promise, feeling natin natupad na natin yung first commandment. Do you follow? Mas lalakas ang loob natin na paniwalaan ang mga pangako ng Diyos. Kung alam natin that when we say, I love God, you mean it. May kwento ka. Nandiyan pa po ba kayo? Kumplitohin natin yung batas. Ano sabi ng batas? Love God with all your heart. Tanong, sinong may hawak ng puso mo ngayon? Si Lord ba? Nasaan ang puso mo ngayon? Yung ang pinagkatiwalaan mo ng puso mo, masyado niyang dinribol ang puso mo na para pang bola ng basketball, dinribol niya ng dinribol at ibinagsak ng matindi at tinadyakan pa ng kadrog-drog ang puso mo. Ayun, babalik ka sa Lord, sabi mo, Lord, my heart is broken to God is always faithful. He's always there to pick up every pieces of our broken heart and to restore us together. <laughs> Ba't kayo pumalakpak? Kasi ni-restore kayo ni Lord. No? E paano yung love God with all your heart? This time, 
bago natin sabing I love God, dapat alam natin, may sariling kwento ka, may sinuko ka, may tinalikuran ka, kapalit ng pagmamahal mo sa Diyos. Jesus was there. He was praying hard. Ang sabi po ni D.L. Moody, it is doubtful for God to bless a man unless he hurt him deeply. Sino po dito gusto nila pagpalain sila ng Diyos? Do you want God to bless you? Do you want God to bless you? Then allow God to hurt you. Alam niyo po sa tutula ng sabi ng Biblia, hindi malupit ang Diyos. Pero ang lahat ng matinong magulang, pinapalo niya, dinidisiplina niya ang kanyang anak. That's why, if you're going through something, if you feel like God is hitting you really hard, allow Him. Because I'm more than sure, every after acts of discipline, there's a blessing waiting for us. Come on! Come on! Kaya ho, sa totoo lang, during the time, sabi po ng Hebrew chapter 5, verse 7, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, He opened up prayers and petition with fervent cries and tears. Hindi ko po ma-imagine na si Jesus pag nagpipray, umaatungal siya, lumuluha siya. Because for all I know, Jesus is close with the Father. In fact, He was part of the triune God. I always believe na yung buntong hinga lang ni Jesus, panalangin na yun. Ganun sila ka-close ng Father. And yet, there was a time in Gethsemane, in His private life, Jesus was not praying cute prayers. He was fervent in ardent crying. He was wailing. He was saying, Abba! Father! If possible, kung possible lang po, kung pwede lang, makalampas ako sa paghihirap na ito. If I were on Jesus' feet, that's all reasonable. Wala namang masama na hilingin na yung pagdurusa, yung pagbubuhat ng krus, yung pagkapako sa krus ay malampasan. And yet, realizing that that will lead him to his death, mas mahal ni Jesus ang kalooban ng Diyos kesa doon sa pagdadaanan niya. That's why he ended up his prayer by saying, Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Listen to me. Hindi ko alam kung anong pinapag-give up ni Lord sa'yo o kung anong pinapagawa ni Lord sa iyo. But please consider, is it worth the love of God? Na kung iwanan mo yan, isuko mo yan, talikuran mo yan, pwede pa yung itapat doon sa pagmamahal ng Diyos sa atin. Did we ever come to God in prayer asking for nothing? You just come to Him and saying, Lord, burita kang luguran. E ako po manyad na anuman. E ako po mag-request na anuman. I'm just here because I just want to love you. We have to love God with all our heart, with all our mind. Sino may ari ng isip nyo? Baka nga nakatingin kayo sa akin, pero wala naman sa akin yung isip nyo. Yung isip nyo nandun na sa mall. No? Tinitingnan mo, oras na. Itong showing kanya mag-start na yun. We have to love God with all our mind, with all our strength. The reason why God made you strong, the reason why God made us resilient, it's not only for us to enjoy life. It got to be more than that. Sabi po ng Biblia, love the Lord with all your strength. Ang tanong, saan natin inuubos yung lakas natin? Misan yung, yung pangang excuse natin para hindi tayo makadalo. Magtitext tayo sa mga leader natin, Ma'am, Sir, hindi po ako makakadalo ngayon. Napagod po ako, napuyat po ako. Ma'am, Sir, absent po muna ako ngayon kasi babawi muna ako ng tulong. Tanong, saan mo inubos yung lakas mo? Pero kung makapag-demand ka sa mga pangako ng Lord sa iyo, wagas. Para namang may pinatago kang himala. Para namang may pinatago kang kagalingan. It is a lot easier to claim the promises of God when you know that when you say, I love God, there is something behind that. Amen. 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 Kung si Jesus so, ganun siya manalangin. Kung si Jesus meron siyang Gethsemane. I can only say, you remember Jabez's prayer? 
the series that we just had, I think, meron din Gethsemane si Jabez. Kung kaya nga ba ang panalangin niya, sabi niya ganun, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. That your hand would be with me. That you would keep me from evil. That I may not cause pain. This person loves God. Otherwise, he will not pray that way. Question. Do we have our own Gethsemane? Our place of sacrifice. Second point. Love God. Gethsemane. Make disciples. Let's talk about Gabata. Anong Gabata? Narinig niyo na po yung salitang Gabata? O yung gata? <laughs> o batal? <laughs> Nampanya biyan ng pastora. <laughs> we get to understand kung ano po ibig sabihin ng Gabata. Or make disciples, allowing your greater purpose to be judged by the standard of this world. Let us read Sabi po dyan sa John chapter 19 verses, 4, uh, verses 7 to 14. Let me read from the NLT. The Jewish leaders replied, ito po yung, uh, remember, okay? Nadakip na si Jesus mula sa Gethsemane. Remember the story? Doon sa unang binasa natin, uh, alam ni Judas kung nasaan si Jesus kasi sinasama niya doon pag nagpipray sila. So si Judas, meron siyang kasama mga uh, uh, temple soldiers at mga guard para Arresto si Jesus. So, naaresto si Jesus mula sa Gethsemane. Ngayon, mula sa Gethsemane, dinala siya kay Pilato. Okay? Para i-judge siya dun sa ina-accuse na crime sa kanya. Let's read. The Jewish leaders replied, By our law, he ought to die because he called himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more frightened than ever. He talked, oh, he took, he talked, he took Jesus back into the headquarters again and asked him, where are you from? Taga saan ka? But Jesus gave him no answer. Why don't you talk to me? Pilate demanded. Don't you realize that I have the power to, re to release you or crucify you? Then Jesus said, You would have no power over me at all unless it were given to you from above. So the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Then Pilate tried to release him, but the Jewish leaders shouted, if you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who declares himself a king is a rebel against Caesar. When they said this, Pilate brought Jesus out to them again. Then Pilate sat down on the judgment seat on the platform that is called the stone pavement. In Hebrew, Gavata. Oh, you understand what is Gavata? Ang gabata po ay isang sementadong upuan na kung saan naupo ang pilato para maghugas ng kamay pagkatapos na magpasa ng judgment. What this has something to do with us? When we say we love God, that is our Gethsemane, our place of sacrifice. When we say we make disciples, that is our gabata. That is our place of judgment. Sino po dito ang na-realize nyo nung bago kayong born again, ginajudge kayo ng mundo? Tang pagsistida ka, itang sasabihan na, o rin na rin born again, ha? na din born again, bor bor again. <laughs> okay? And we are being persecuted. Madali hong tanggapin yung judgment from outside. Mahirap tanggapin yung judgment na nanggagaling sa kapwa mo kristyano. O kaya sa mga leaders, spiritual leaders. Kasi dito, ang nag-judge kay Jesus, mga religious leaders. Do you follow? Kaya kapag may purpose ka sa buhay at hindi naiintindihan niya ng ibang tao, i-judge ka nila. If you don't do what they do, if you do what God told you to do, most likely they will judge you. Because that is not their standard. And we don't care. Because we don't live to the standard of this world. We live to the standard that God has called us to. Amen. Amen. Come on, palakpan po natin ang Panginoon. <laughs> Di po ba sabi ni Jesus, if you follow me, carry your cross. Kasama po sa panawagan natin, kasama sa pagiging kristyano natin, ay yung 
pasanin natin yung ating mga cross. Kaya lang ho, minsan, we thought that carrying the cross is something beautiful. no? Kasi po tayo, ang alam natin cross, yung cross na hikaw, pendant. O kaya yung cross na hikaw, pendant, parang <laughs> pendant sa tenga. Da. Yung hikaw na cross o yung palawit ng kwintas, yung Christianity, ganun ngayon eh. Ornamental. Accessories. Pero before, when you are told to carry your cross, that is a death sentence. Dahil sa Biblia po, ang lahat ng nagpasan ng kanilang cross na matay. Because they were crucified on the very cross that they are carrying. That's why when Jesus told His disciples, Gavata, make disciples. When Jesus told His disciples, come follow me and carry your cross, most of the people, they don't understand. In baka sabi po ng Biblia, that was the time na nabawasan yung sumusunod kay Jesus because they cannot accept the fact that Jesus is requiring them to die. Pero di po ba ganun naman talaga? Kapag sumunod tayo sa Diyos, mamamatay tayo sa ating sarili. That we have to die to ourselves. Ano po sabi ng Galatians 2.20? I am crucified with Christ. Therefore, I no longer live. The life that I live, I live in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Therefore, I no longer live, but Christ live in me. That is Christianity. That's why when we say, I love God, I make disciple, when you say, I make disciple, you should be willing to be judged by the standard of this world. If you want people to adapt your lifestyle as a disciple, wag kang sensitive, wag kang emotional. When people say something against you, you don't mind. Because you don't seek the approval of this world. Amen. Wag tayong senti. May nag-comment lang sa'yo, nag-backslide ka na. Di ba? Si Jesus, so, He was judged. But He kept His silence. Dying to the approval of this world, dying to the standard of this world is one way for us to make disciples. Sa totoo lang po, this is Jesus' pattern. Alam niyo po ba na yung mga kapatid ni Jesus hindi naniniwala sa Kanya? They don't believe In Jesus, kahit nung nangangaral siya, gumagawa siya ng himala, nagpapalay sila ng, siya ng demonyo, hindi siya pinapaniwalaan. When was the time that Jesus says, brothers and sisters, believe Him? That was the time that He died already. Nung mamatay siya, tsaka lang siya pinaniwalaan. Alam niyo po, sa totoo lang, hindi ko naman sinasabing mamatay na yung marami sa atin para may maniwala sa atin. But we all know that dying to self is the only way for us to give a real testimony to other people around us. Pero kung hanggang ngayon, kristyano ka na, mayabang ka pa rin, maarte ka pa rin, kung makipagsabayan ka sa mundo, ganun din, no? kung anong uso, sinasabayan mo, kung anong kanta, kinakanta mo, eh what's the difference? Andiyan pa po ba kayo? Andiyan pa po ba kayo? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, mamatay na daw tayo. Amen. Listen to me. Uh, I've been in Christianity for the last 34 years. Uh, born again po ako one year old. <laughs> Ang bilis niyo mag-compute eh, no? <laughs> Hindi ko naman po itinatatwa na ako ay 50 years old na kahit mukha lang po akong 35. <laughs> But I've been in the church for quite some time. I know how it is to serve the Lord, to see people got born again, and I know how it is to see people grow cold in their faith, and I know how it is to be judged and misjudged by other people inside the church. At sa totoo lang po, si Jesus yun yung pinagdaanan niya. No? He was doing the Father's will. And people around him, especially spiritual leaders, they don't understand him. They judge him. Kaya kung may pinagdadaanan po kayong ganun, don't lose heart. Di ba sabi ni Jesus? Don't lose heart. Bago niyo pa pagdaanan yan, pinagdaanan na niya. 
So next time you say that my purpose in life is to love God, you know how it is to love God kasi may ibinigay ka, may sinurender ka. The next time you say that my purpose in life is to make disciple, you know how it is to make disciple because you paid the price. You died to yourself. Andiyan pa po ba kayo? Go back again to the story. Nung aresto yun na si Jesus, nandun yung mga soldiers, nandun yung mga temple guards, ano sabi ni Jesus? If you are looking for me, I am the one that you are looking for. Let these people go and you arrest me. You read your Bible again. That is leadership. That is being a Christian. It's like saying, Lord, okay lang po ako nang dadaan dito para sa kanila. Kung ano man yung pinagdadaanan ko, I will learn my lesson so that my disciple will learn from me. A true leader allow himself to be beaten, to get hurt, so that out of that painful experience, his disciples will learn from him. Talk about gabata. Kung hindi ka handa na husga ng mundo, wag ka munang sumunod. But I tell you, there's no other way but to face the judgment of this world. Makinig ko kayo sa akin. I would rather face the judgment of this world than to face the judgment of God someday. Sabi ni Jesus, matakot kayo hindi sa mga nakakasakit sa inyong katawan kundi sa Kanya na may kapangyarihang ibulid ang inyong kaluluwa sa impyerno. Bring yourself to that judgment today so that you will be qualified. You have a story to tell. You know how to make disciples. Love God. Gethsemane, the place of your sacrifice. Make disciples, Gavata, the place of your judgment. Huwag niyo pong takasan ng judgment ng mundong ito para matakasan niyo ang judgment ng darating na mundo. Nandiyan pa po ba kayo? Lastly, I will end up with this. Love God, Gethsemane, make disciples, Gavata, and impact our world, Golgotha. Iyon ang panyabihan ng pastor. Semani, Gabata, Golgotha. <laughs> well, just take it uh, this way. At least, bago matapos yung gawain, may natutuwang kayong tatlong Hebrew word. <laughs> What's the first G? Get Semani, which is your place of sacrifice, your private personal prayer life. And what's the second G? Gabata. The... the the place of your judgment, at least to the uh, standard of this world. And lastly, letter G, Golgotha. Affirming your greater purpose by dying to yourself on your place of surrender. Okay? Believe it or not, when we say we love God, there are a lot of surrendering that we need to do. Andiyan pa po ba kayo? Let's read John 19 verses 17 to 20. Carrying the cross by himself, he went to the place called place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. Sundan niyo po yung kwento. Diba, inaresto si Jesus sa Gethsemane. Kinaladkad siya. Okay? Papunta kay Pilato. Pagdating sa Pilato, ginad siya dun sa Gabata. Okay? And then, from there, he was forced to carry his cross, going to Golgotha. That place of skull. Let us read. Sabi po dito, there, they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on its, uh, either side with Jesus between them. And Pilate posted a sign on the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So that many people could read it. The last time I was in Israel po, uh, yung tourist guide namin, dinilahu nila kami sa Golgotha. And uh, the place is literally beside the city. Nasa highway po siya. Dinadaanan ng maraming tao. There were, there were that hill, may hill po doon, na kung saan ipinapako yung mga katulad ni Jesus, yung mga magnanako and everything. They were crucified there. For what reason? Hindi ho sa barrio or hindi sa likod. Doon ho sila sa malapit sa city so that everybody can. For what reason? To highlight the humiliation. 
Nandiyan pa po ba kayo? Para tumindi pa yung pagkakapahiya ng mga nakapako sa cross. And that is the reason why the name that was posted on the top of Jesus' cross was translated into three languages. Ano languages ho yun? Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. You know why? Kasi ganun karaming tao ang dumadaan doon. Ganun karaming kultura ang nandun sa busy street na yun. And yet, Jesus is more than willing to accept it. Sa totoo lang po, as leaders, as Christians, or as simply followers of Christ, ang focus po natin dapat ay yung mission natin sa buhay. Yung purpose natin. Which is to love God, to make disciples, and impact our world. Ang tanong, paano tayo makakapagbigay ng impact? Nakaredy po ba kayong to pa rin yung pinapagawa ng Diyos sa atin? Kahit yung pinapagawa niya ay nangangailangang mamatay tayo. Probably we would not, no? Sino po dito ang kapag may biglang pumasok ng mga sundalo dyan sa pintuan natin at sabi, sasabihin sa atin, ang lahat ng mga kristyano dito ay papatay namin. Yung ayaw mamatay, lumabas sa pintuan. Yung may lang dito sa loob, ang papatay namin. Sino po lalabas? Magtest ng kamay. <laughs> Sino po mag stay sa loob para mamatay? Ang mga aparisyon lang kayo, wala akong kausap. <laughs> mga ilusyonado lang talaga ako, kaya wala naman talaga akong kausap. But you know what? Si Jesus po, alam niya that the only way for him to finish his mission is to die on the cross. Let's read. John 19 verses 20 to 30. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished while he was hanging on the cross. He was hanging on the cross. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished and to fulfill the scripture, he said, I am thirsty. Okay? Nandun ho siya sa cross, nakapako. At alam niya, yun na yung katapusan niya. Natupad na niya ang panawagan niya sa buhay. Natupad na niya ang pangarap niya. Natupad na niya ang hadikain niya. Natupad na niya ang purpose niya. Bakit siya ipinanganak dito sa lupa? Now, if you are asking yourself, despite of the many successes that you have in life, despite of the many countries, cities, and places that you have visited, this ha sa kabila ng lahat ng pagtupad mo, lahat ng pangarap mo, pakiramdam mo, kulang ka pa rin sa buhay. Probably because you are not hitting the mark of your purpose in life. Baka hindi mo talaga natutumbok yung plano ng Diyos sa buhay mo. It may be painful. It may even look gross. But Jesus hanging on the cross, He said, I finish my calling. Nandiyan pa po ba kayo? Nandiyan pa po ba kayo? John 19 verses 41 to 42. The place of crucifixion was near a garden and there was a new tomb never used before. And so it was the day of preparation for the Jewish Passover and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus. I saw this place. This place still exists today. Yung pong hill na kung saan pinako si Jesus, yung Golgotha, very near from there. Pagpapa doon sa hill, may pathway, meron hong garden sa bandaron. It's no less than one kilometer. Okay? Yung distansya kung di ako nagkakamali. Nung ipako po si Jesus sa cross, that was almost Sabbath day. There was no time for more preparation. That's why immediately, from the cross, binabaho siya diretso dun sa tomb. Dun na ho siya inimbalsa mo. What's the point of that? Makinig ko kayo sa akin. Sa pagsunod natin sa Panginoon, when we die to ourself, when we surrender our selfish interest in life, something is waiting for us. We will never experience the power of resurrection life until we are willing to die. We will never experience the power that overcomes death until we ourselves die. Akala lang ho natin, oo, siyempre, sino ba namang matutuwa sa kamatayan? Oo, masakit ang mag-surrender, masakit ang mag-give up, masakit ang talikuran ng mali. Pero 
ang tanong ko po ulit sa atin ay ito. Worth po ba yun kapalit sa pagmamahal ng Diyos? Worth po ba yun kapalit ng lahat ng disciple na sumusunod sa iyo? All the more, worth pa yun para mag-iwan ka ng isang legacy sa mundong ito na dahil sa pagsunod mo sa Diyos, may mga susunod sa bakas mo balang araw. When you say, I love God, I make disciples, I impact my world. Let it be your purpose in life. At kapag sinabi mo yon, hindi lang siya basta statement. Meron kang kwento. Meron kang hugot. Dahil alam mo kung ano ang ipinalit mo sa pagmamahal mo sa Diyos. Romans 12 verses 1 and 2, ang sabi doon, I beseech you therefore brothers that you present your bodies as living sacrifice to the Lord. Alam niyo po sa Biblia, walang sacrifice ang nanatiling buhay. Lahat ng sacrifice na matay. If we want to present our bodies before God, what God requires from us is for us to die on ourselves. Let us die on our pride. Let us die on our being overly sensitive. Let us die on our being emotional. Let us grow. Let us mature. So that when we say, I love God, it has death. When we say, I make disciples, people around you, they know that you mean business. When you say, I impact my world, buhay ka pa, buka ka ng alamat. Tignan mo ngayon katabi mo. Parang si Leon Guerrero lang. Okay. But seriously, let's just recap. I'll say the statement, you give me the word. Love God. What's the word? Make disciples. Impact our world. My last question before we close in prayer today. Nasaan na po kayo? Are you still in Gethsemane? Are you in Gabata? Or are you in Golgotha? O wala ka pa sa lahat kasi namamasyal ka pa rin? You're still playing on the enemy's fence. You're still compromising to the standard of this world. This is the best time to make that decision. Start the journey of your purpose in God. Tayo pong lahat ay makot manalangin. O Diyos, aming Ama, pinagpapala ka po namin at tinadakila. Salamat po dahil may pangarap ka para sa amin. May plano ka sa bawat buhay namin. Dalangin po namin, O Diyos, bigyan niyo kami ng lakas ng loob na ipagpalit sa mga plano mo ang mga plano namin. Na yakapin ang mga adhikain mo laban sa mga adhikain namin. Dahil madalas, O Diyos, ang inaakala naming maganda para sa amin, yun mismo ang naglalayo sa amin sa inyo. Kaya dalangin ko po ngayong umaga, ang bawat isa sa amin ay bigyan mo ng bagong pangitain. Give us a new purpose. Give us a new vision. Give us a new plan, Lord God. The one that you have planned long, long time ago. Because you said in your word, you know your plans for our lives. They are planned not to harm us, but to prosper us, to give us a hope and a future. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Help us to look upon Him, the one who fulfilled His mission. The one who started this faith and who is about to perfect it. Siya lang po, wala nang iba. Si Kristo lang. Bago po tayo magwakas sa panalangin ngayong umaga, nais ko pong buksan yung altar para sa mga bisita natin. Marahil po, uh, or probably you've been attending church, or in fact, you are even serving God, pero wala kang matumbok na specific na purpose ng buhay mo. Sa totoo lang po, nagsisimula yan sa personal na relasyon natin sa Diyos. You find your purpose and significance in life out of your personal relationship with God. Kung gusto nyo po ibalik natin sa Diyos yung ating mga buhay, nais ko pong samahan kayo sa panalangin. You know, just bow our heads and close our eyes. Sabihin po natin ng ganitong panalangin. Panginoon, 
Binubuksan ko po ang aking puso. Tinatanggap ko si Kristo bilang aking Panginoon at personal na tagapagligtas. Patawarin niyo po ako sa aking mga kasalanan sa mga ling- maling desisyon sa buhay ko. Salamat po sa kapatawaran. Simula po ngayong araw, susunod ako sa inyo. Sa iyo ko lang isasandal ang aking pagtitiwala. Pinupuri po kita at tinadakila. Panginoon, dalangin ko, bigyan niyo po ako ng isang maliwanag nadhikain sa buhay. Ipaunawa mo sa akin, O Diyos, ang lahat ng plano mo sa aking buhay. Salamat po. Susunod ako sa inyo. Sa pangalan ni Jesus. Raise your hands, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious with you. The Lord bless you with His peace. The Lord bless you with His love. The Lord bless you with His grace. The Lord bless everything that your hands will find to do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people will say, Amen and Amen.